Hey there, this is Math 7, Unit 3, Lesson 3, Exploring Circumference today is what we're talking about. And so we're going to talk about the circumference, as we mentioned before, is going to be how we measure the distance around a circular object there. And so you began today in class with a question here where it says, Claire wonders if the height of the toilet paper tube or the distance around the tube is greater. So whether it be this length here from top to bottom is greater than the distance around the actual tube. Okay, so what would she need to be able to figure that out? How could she solve that there? I mean, you could take a ruler and you could measure the length of that one right there, right? You could say, oh, it's going to be a certain height if it was a real object. But it's hard to take a ruler and to go around a circular object. Like we mentioned before, you can take a piece of string and you could go around a circular object like so, right? We could take a string around it and then we could spread that string out to measure to see how long that might be. And that could get us a measurement there um, and that would work it may not be perfect but it would get you close so in order to figure out that distance around we're going to need to know some information about some different links that are happening here maybe it'd be good to find out how far it is across that tube or maybe the whole diameter or maybe just the radius of it and that's what we're going to be talking about today as we explore circumference in this lesson okay so in activity number two, we were measuring circumference and diameter. And so you were given several objects by your teacher to take a look at and to measure the diameter and then figure out the circumference of that object. And you could have done that with string or with a, uh, a measurement tape of some sort there. For my purpose here, I used um, a mug, a coffee mug, and I used a quarter and I use my megaphone that we use in case there's an emergency at school, okay? And so for my coffee mug, I found that the, di the diameter of my coffee mug, the distance across the coffee mug was a 9.9 .9 centimeters across, okay? For my quarter, I had a quarter and the one I measured was about 2.3 centimeters. And then for my megaphone, it was 19.5 centimeters across the megaphone part, right? So it looks like this. And there's my megaphone that I used there. Okay, and my quarter for the happy person in the middle because 25 cents. And my coffee mug, like so. All right, to measure the circumference, I went ahead and I just used the string. And I took a string, that's all I had with me on my, my desk that day and I measured around each object and got an approximate value for the distance around. For the mug, it was approximately 32 centimeters around the mug. For the quarter, this one's a little bit trickier to do, I got about 7.2 centimeters for the circumference around the quarter. And for the megaphone, I ended up with about 60 centimeters around that object there. Okay. So that was my diameter and circumference for the three objects that I did just in practice this, practicing this as well, okay? When I take a look at that then, I could plot those values for the diameter and circumference on the table on the coordinate, from the table to the coordinate plane. And when I do that, if I take a look here at 9.9, .9, which is about there at 10, and I put it up here at about 32, which is gonna be this line right there, so I'd have a point somewhere about there is one. My quarter is at 2.3, so here's two and a bit, and I'm at seven, so that's gonna be two, four, six, and seven is about here. So it'll be something like that. And my megaphone at 19.5, about there, is gonna go up to 60, which is on this line right there. Get this right? Nope, 19, 19.5, there we go and something like that. Again, if I look at a ruler, not perfect by any means, I know, all right? But if I take a ruler from the origin and I draw a line from the origin through there, what I notice is, is that I do have points that are all pretty much near the line. This one's a little lower, this one's a little above, a little lower, but for the most part, I seem to have a proportional relationship between the diameter and the circumference of those objects there, okay? So when I plot those points, that's what I'm noticing there. So when I go back to my, my table 
What's interesting is we've talked before about finding that constant proportionality or looking at is there a proportional relationship. And we often will label this as an X and that as a Y. And we'll go Y over X to see what do I end up with. If I do 32 over 9.9, .9, what I end up with is I end up with 3.09. That's my constant proportionality for the mug. Okay. Now let's see what I have here. Here I have a 7.2 over 2.3, and that works out to be about 3.13. And for the megaphone, I had a 60 over 19.5, which was about 3.07. These numbers are all fairly close together, which shows me again that I probably have a proportional relationship between the diameter and the circumference of an object. And for what we're going to do in upcoming activities is we're going to call this 3.1, okay? We're going to use 3.1 as kind of our constant proportionality, our k value for now, okay? Let's take a look at the next page and see if we can apply that to the next activity. All right. Suppose you had another circular object with a diameter that is half as long as the diameter of your largest circle. Well, for me, I had my diameter and I had my circumference, and my largest one happened to be a diameter of 20, and about 20, it was 19.5, and my circumference was about 60, right? So if I did a half of that, to go half by diameter was 10, what's gonna happen here is this is also gonna go down, I'm multiplying by a half, I'll multiply by a half, and I end up with 30, okay? So my circumference will be 30. And I can do that because there's a proportional relationship between the two, okay? And if anything, we notice that based upon my thing before, it's about multiplying by about three to get the difference in diameter and circumference there, okay? So here are five circles, and one measurement for each circle is given in the table. So we have a diameter, and we have 10 and 24. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use the constant proportionality we had before, and that was 3.1, to estimate these other lengths in our table. So for circle A, if we multiply 3 times 3.1, we end up with 9.3. If we multiply 10 by 3.1, I end up with 31. And down here, 1 times 3.1 will give me 3.1. So going this direction, I multiply by 3.1. To go this direction, remember, I'm gonna do 24 divided by 3.1, and that's gonna give me 7.7, .7, and 18 divided by 3.1, which would give me 5.8, okay? So using that constant proportionality, right, my circumference over my diameter we said is about 3.1 for my k value, and we use that there. And so what's happening as we go through this is we can see that for the most part, the diameter, the diameter times three, or about three, is gonna be equal to my circumference, right? So I multiply this by three, a little bit more than three, I get my circumference. That's true on this table, and it was true on our previous table when I looked at just the mug and the quarter and things like that. So there does seem to be a proportional relationship again between the diameter and the circumference. In terms of our summary for today, okay, in terms of our summary, we would say that there is a proportional relationship between the diameter and the circumference of any circle. That means that if you write C for circumference and D for diameter, we know that C equals K times D, where K is the constant proportionality. So that exact value for that is what we call pi. And that's what today's lesson is driving at there. Our K value in this case is what we call pi. All right, and we draw it like that. Two lines will squiggle on top. That's our pi value. And a couple of things you can use for pi. You can use 3.14. We were using 3.1 to start with today. You could also call it 22 over 7. That comes in handy if you have some fraction types of things you're working with there. Or you can go to a little longer value and do 3.14159 and kind of memorize, memorize it out to five different decimal places there. These are all great things you can use. 
you'll also find in your calculator that it does have the pi button and sometimes you can just press that pi button in your calculator and it's going to give you an equivalent for what pi is going to be all right you can use that to help you figure out what the diameter of a circle is going to be or circumference of a circle depending upon what you know that relationship looks like this that our circumference is equal to pi times the diameter so knowing the diameter it has a proportional relationship with the circumference we multiply it by the constant proportionality pi to end up with our circumference value there all right we're going to go on to the homework so make sure you pause and work on your homework and then check your work as we continue all right so here's our homework for lesson three unit three it says diego measured the diameter and circumference of several circular objects and recorded his measurements in the table one of his measurements is inaccurate so one is inaccurate which measurement is it and how do you know well we said that the, the relationship between a diameter and circumference is about multiplying by about three a little more than three we know that's 3.14 right but if we said about three um you know a bit more than three let's see what you get so this one times three would get you nine a little more we know it's a little more 10 is probably pretty close 23 times 3 should get you at 69, probably 70. Huh, that one doesn't seem to be very close at all. This one's times 8 times 20, 8 times 3, sorry, is 24. That's pretty close. 15 times 3 is 45. Again, pretty close there. Again, this is 3. It should be a little more than 3, 3.14. So just doing some quick estimation, this guy right here seems a little bit off, doesn't it? We should be something in the 70s, and that's not even close. To what's going on there so there should be a relationship of near our k value of pi 3.14 that i multiply by the diameter to get the circumference and that's not even close so we would say the flying disc is definitely accurate for number two complete the table use one of the approximate values of for pi discussed in class 3.14 22 over 7 or the longer one and explain or show your reasoning okay so for 35 um, because 35 is a multiple of 7, I went ahead and did it by multiplied by 22 over 7. And I can reduce that to 1 and 5. And 5 times 22 is 110. And that's inches there. Okay. Um, for 556, I went ahead and you can just divide by um, 3.14 and end up with 177. Okay, going the other way, All right? Here with a 5.2, it's just easy to multiply by 3.14, and that left me, for me, at 16.328, right there, something like that. And then for the car tire again, I divided by 3.14, and you should end up with something pretty close to 22.8. You decide what you want to use, what value. I tend to use the decimal one more than anything else. I often don't go out that far unless I want to get something super accurate. That will come up in a future lesson as well. Okay, for what's up next, we want to name a segment that is a radius and then name a segment that's a diameter. So we're looking for a radius and how long it is and a diameter and how long it is from the next picture. Let's take a look here in terms of a radius. So our radius values. We could have a radius of, we could have A to C, A to E, A to G, A to B, and A to D are all a radius. Our diameter though is definitely only gonna be C to D. It has to go all the way across and through the midpoint, okay? The diameter's value here listed is at 15. So we know our value of our diameter is 15. A radius is two diameters together, so it's 15 divided by 2, which would be 7 and a half is our radius. So our radius is 7 and a half, and our diameter is 15 right there. Okay, number four, the last one here. Consider the equation y equals 1.5x plus 2. Find four pairs of x and y values that make the equation true. Plot the points on the coordinate plane, and here we go. So what I do is I make a little t-chart, okay? 
and I would go X and Y and draw this like so. Okay, and I'm gonna do a zero, one, two, and three. Just has some values there. And so we'll put this in our place. So when X is equal to zero, okay, 1.5 times zero plus two, that becomes zero, so I have two for a value there. When I plug it in here, 1.5 times one plus two becomes 3.5 because that's one plus two, 3.5. If I did 1.5 times two plus two, I'd have 1.5 times two is three, three plus two is five, and five goes there. And it says plot the points, we're doing four pairs, right? So one, two, three, four, here's four. So 1.5 times three, that's gonna be four and a half plus two, which is gonna be six and a half. Okay, so for my points, when x is equal to zero, y is equal to two. When x is equal to one, y is equal to three and a half, about that. At two, we're at five. At three, we're at six and a half, about here. Okay, so based on the graph, is this a proportional relationship? Okay, that's the big question. If I was to draw this as a line, we would say, well, it is a line, yes. The question though is, to be proportional, does it go through the origin? In this case here, we would say no, it's not proportional, okay? And the reason it's not is because it doesn't begin and go through the origin. That's what it has to have to be a proportional relationship. Which means if we look at this, this uh, equation, if we were to eliminate the plus two, and get rid of that there, and just have y equals 1.5 times x, we could say, yeah, it'd be proportional. This whole graph could slide down and start here and go just like that. But because it has that plus two, we're gonna shift the whole graph up two points from the origin. So it's not a proportional relationship. Okay, hope that helps you out today. Have a great day.